Welcome to this video about apparent and absolute magnitudes of stars and we're going to have a look at what the differences are between apparent and absolute magnitude as well as finishing with a calculation you can do to work out the distance to stars using the apparent and absolute magnitudes. So the starting point is Vega. Now Vega is a bright blue whitish star in the constellation of Lyra and it's used as a reference point for all other stars in the sky. So it has a magnitude of zero. It's kind of the reference point that we're going to work from. So each magnitude difference on the system is 2.512 times brighter. So if a star had a magnitude one difference, then it could be 2.512 times brighter or dimmer. And it's a logarithmic scale. So each time you go up one magnitude, it changes by this amount. So that's worth noting. Now, for a star that is dimmer than Vega, it's going to have a higher magnitude, which might sound a bit strange, but that's how it works. So if Vega has a magnitude of zero, and we have a star here, Polaris, which is actually our North Star or Pole Star, it's actually five times dimmer than Vega, but its magnitude is 1.98. That's because it's a this logarithmic scale. Now, a star that would be brighter, so here we have Sirius, which is brighter than Vega, but it has a negative magnitude. So it has a lower magnitude as they get brighter compared to Vega. So Sirius has a magnitude of minus 1.5. It means that it's actually 3.77 times brighter than Vega when compared to it in the same sky. Now, when we look into the sky, if you've got a nice clear skies, you'll note that obviously not all stars are the same brightness. And the apparent magnitude we see in the sky is how bright we perceive it from Earth. So when we look into the sky, it's the apparent magnitude that we're actually seeing. So it's how bright it appears to us from Earth. Now, the absolute magnitude is the magnitude or the brightness of a star from some set distance. So all stars, they are imagined to be measured from some set distance, which is 10 parsecs or 32.6 light years. So it's the same distance each time, and that is the absolute magnitude. Now, if you're not familiar with a parsec, just to recap, one parsec is basically the, um, the distance to an object whose parallax angle is one arc second. So what that means is the orbit of the Earth, if we take a measurement six months apart, the Earth has moved so far, which is about 2 AU, and if you get a a one arc second parallax angle, the distance then that that subtends is, is one parsec, which is actually the same as 3.26 light years. And that's the distance that light travels in that time period. So if we know what type of star it is, we can then work out what the luminosity would be and therefore the absolute magnitude. So on the HR diagram, if we know what spectral type it is, so how hot it is how you know, its surface temperature, things like that, how big the star is, we can work out its, its luminosity, which is then a direct relation to absolute magnitude. So if we know all of that, we can get this absolute magnitude. Now, all stars are different distances away from us. So the, in the Milky Way, our sun is approximately located here. Um, and the Milky Way is made of various different stars, gas, dust, and they're all different distances from us. So because we're looking at stars at different distances, they're all going to appear different brightnesses. So the ones closest are going to be brighter and the ones furthest away are going to be dimmer. So we can use this relationship then to work out a distance to it. So the intensity of light that we get from a star decreases with the distance. Now it decreases as a function of one over the distance squared. So what that means is that as you get further away it gets a lot dimmer and an example here just gives you a bit of a visualization of that so if we have two stars one star is located twice the distance away from one the one that's furthest away is going to be a quarter of the brightness as the one closest so if you move twice as far away then the brightness decreases to a quarter and that's the relationship there so we can use this relationship to then work out a distance to that star. This is assuming though 
that both those stars are the same target, have the same absolute magnitude. So using this equation here, this relationship, we can work out a distance. So if we take a measurement of a star in our sky and we can work out its apparent magnitude in comparison to Vega, then we have this lowercase m, which is our apparent magnitude. We then work out what type of star it is and we can find out what the absolute magnitude would be. So we have that. And then we put that into this equation and we can get a distance to it in parsecs. Now, what I will do in another video is work through an example of using a supernova explosion to work out a distance to it because certain types will always explode with the same energy. So they'll always have the same absolute magnitude. We can measure their apparent magnitude and therefore we can get a distance to them. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoy, then watch, have a look at some of the other videos as well.